Now that we've created our invoices, I want to show you what you're going to do when the customer actually pays them. Now there are several different ways to record a payment of an invoice inside of Wave Accounting. So I will show you some of those different ways that you can do that today. Probably the easiest way to record a payment of an invoice is from the transaction screen because we're going to assume that if you've set up your bank accounts to sync with Wave, the bank account is going to recognize the deposit of those funds the, um, of the customer payment right in your bank account. And so the transaction's already in Wave, we just need to link it to an invoice and show that that deposit or that payment is paying that invoice. So let me show you how that type of a payment would be made. So let's go to the transactions page. And here on the transactions page, we've got a few deposits. And we're going to just imagine that these deposits are paying off some of these invoices. So let's say that this $42.19 is going to go towards one of our invoices. So if I come to the arrow on the right hand side of the transaction line, I can get a small drop down menu of options available for that particular transaction. And you can see that one of the options is to create an invoice payment. So I'm going to select create invoice payment. Now I have to tell it which invoice we're paying on. And we'll say we're paying on the $42.63 invoice. And then I create the payment. And that is all there is to linking that deposit with the invoice. And you can see that the description on that deposit has now changed to say payment from Doe Enterprises Inc. Because it recognizes that it's paying off that invoice. The category has also changed to invoice payment. And if we go back to the invoices screen, we can see that the amount due on that invoice has changed to 44 cents, the difference between the 42.63 of the original invoice and the amount that we deposited for that invoice. Now have we paid the invoice in full, as you'll see in a minute, that amount due will go to zero and the overdue alert will disappear. So let's go back and pay off our other invoice, invoice number two, with another one of our deposits. So let's say that this $160 deposit shown here is going to pay off our invoice number two. So I can come in here and say, just like before, create an invoice payment, select invoice number two, and create my payment. Now, if you are paying close attention to this, you would have noticed that the payment amount, the deposit, was for considerably more money than the actual value of the invoice itself. You would have expected the software to alert you to that fact, but WAVE doesn't. And so if you're not paying close attention, you can overpay an invoice. If you overpay an invoice, you'll notice when you look at your invoices screen. So let's go back and take a look at this invoice. And you can see it does mark it as fully paid, but the amount due shows a negative 116.53. We have overpaid that invoice. So that is not the best way to handle um, a payment if the payment's going to be for more money than the invoice. Also, the software didn't give us an option to pay multiple invoices with that single deposit. Um, it's very common to have a customer who wants to send one check for several different invoices that they want paid. So let's back out that payment and I'll show you how we should have done that payment when the amount on the deposit is greater than the amount on the invoice. So if I come and click on the drop down menu for this particular invoice and view the invoice, if you go all the way to the bottom of the screen, all of the payments associated with that particular invoice. And you can see our $160 payment there at the bottom with some icons off to the right hand side with different actions. The paper airplane will resend the invoice to the customer, the pencil will edit, and the trash can can delete. It doesn't delete the transaction itself, it just deletes the association with that deposit and this invoice, which is what we want to do. So remove that payment and let's go back to the transaction screen. So here we are on our transaction screen and you can see that our $160 deposit no longer shows that it's an invoice payment because we've removed it from the invoice. So now we can reassign it. 
but we only want to re reassign the $43.47 that make up the total for our invoice. So how we would do this is splitting the deposit. You can do this from the drop down menu on the right side of the transaction. So I come to the menu and select split transaction. I can now tell it how, how much to split on each line. And in this case, I want to split $43.47. And it tells me that $116.53 will be left over. And we'll just put that down below. Split the transaction. And now I have two transactions, a $43.47 and a $116.53. Now I can take that $43.47 amount and create the invoice payment for only that amount allocate it to invoice number two and create payment. And now my 4347 has paid off that invoice and I still have a balance of 116.53 in my bank account that I can choose to do something else with if I wanted to. So let's go ahead and look at the invoice. And you can see that the invoice now shows that it's fully paid off. It shows the green paid status here and the amount due is zero. That is how you would take one deposit to pay multiple items or if a client somehow overpays. Now, there may be a, a situation where a client really does overpay and it's not that they want to allocate it to multiple invoices, they just misread the invoice, miswrote the check, and they've sent too much money. So one thing you can do if you wanted to Let's go back to our transactions page for a minute and take that remaining 116.53 and allocate it to our invoice number one just to show you what this would look like. So now like I showed you before, invoice one is overpaid by $116.09. Now perhaps that was a client error and we want to send that $116.09 back. The way that we would do this in most accounting systems would be to create a credit memo that we can issue a refund back to the customer. Wave Accounting does not have a credit memo as a transaction option. Uh, it, in their invoicing section right now. So if we wanted to create a credit memo, what you actually have to do is create a negative payment. Sounds a little weird, sounds a little backwards, but it works. So let's create a negative payment for this 116.09. To do that, I will need to select that invoice and from the drop down menu on the right hand side of that invoice, create another payment. So even though the invoice is fully paid, I still have the option of adding additional payments. So I'm going to add an additional payment and I'm going to say that I'm going to record the payment manually. Now I have to select which account I'm going to record this transaction in. If you're going to create a refund check that you're going to write, then I would probably just select your bank account and then the negative amount that we're going to write back. We're going to do this by a check and in the memo line, be sure to leave some good notes as to what you're doing. So refunded client for overpayment and pay now. It lets me know that that was recorded successfully. Now the invoice shows that it has a zero balance. And if I come back to the transaction screen, I've got this 11609 expense waiting to be linked, synced with the bank account. So that would act like a check or another expense transaction um, on your bank. So if you had to refund money back for an overpayment, that would be how you could do it. Uh, in most situations, you're not going to need that functionality, but it is there uh, should you need it. So that's how you would create a invoice payment using the bank transactions. And honestly, that's probably the most common way to recognize the payment of an invoice inside of Wave Accounting and in most accounting softwares. However, there is another way that you can create a 
a payment towards an invoice, which is a manual payment. Manual payments do not rely on the bank feeds to get their transaction information. Most of the time you're not going to use a manual payment because you do have your banks linked to WAVE and so most of your transactions should feed in. However, sometimes a client may pay you in cash or you may accept payment on site and you want to recognize that that payment was made immediately even though you haven't deposited anything in the bank yet. If, that's a, if that happens, then that would be a good scenario where you may want to use a manual payment. So let me show you how that works. We saw an example of a manual payment when we created the refund payment back to the customer that overpaid. But let me show you how it would work in a normal scenario. So we're going to imagine that the payment for the invoice two for 4347 has not been made yet. So I'm going to back that out really quickly and we'll make that payment again using the manual payment method. So here we are back at the invoices screen and as you can see our invoice two has been marked as not being paid yet. So we want to pay that using a manual invoice. Now we're not going to be going to the transactions page like we did before because we're assuming that a bank transaction has not been created for this yet. That's why we're using the manual payment. So we're going to need to do that using the invoices page. To create a manual payment on the invoices page, we first need to hover over or select the invoice that we want to pay, in this case invoice 2. Then select from its drop down menu, add a payment. We want to record a payment manually and we're going to select the bank account it's going to be deposited into and it will pre-fill with the balance of the invoice. You could change this if you wanted to. So I could say $20 if I wanted to. In this case, we're gonna leave it at $43.47 and I choose the method. Let's say they're paying by cash and I can say pay now. When you're doing a manual payment, one of the cool things that I like about it is you can actually send a receipt to the customer letting them know that you have received the payment. Now, if you receive it via the bank account, and you just link the transaction, you can still go in and view the invoice like I showed you before and send a receipt of that payment. But since we're recording the payment manually, I can do it right here at the moment. So I can click send a receipt. It'll ask me to verify the email address. I can add a message if I wanted and also send me a copy just like when we sent the invoice originally. And then I just click send. And now the customer has received a receipt in the form of an email um, letting them know that we have in fact received their payment and you can see that the invoice shows that it's been paid. This can be really handy if you're out on site and you do work and the client pays you immediately. It's really cool when you can say okay here's your receipt and you email it off and they receive it immediately as soon as the as the payment's been made. So this that's a really handy feature especially for people that tend to be out in the field a lot and are interacting face to face with their clients when the payment takes place. But now we have an interesting situation because we have the manual payment that we created and then we have the payment that's going to be syncing with the bank when we make the deposit. So let me show you how to take care of that because we don't want duplications. If I come back to the transactions page, you can see here that we have two different transactions related to this 4347 payment. One is the deposit brought in by the bank on 423 and the other is the manual payment that we created on 610. Both of these really represent the same transaction. They were just brought into WAVE from different sources. But we want WAVE to recognize them as the same transaction. So to do this the easiest thing to do is just merge them and if you'll remember from our bank transactions lessons the easiest way to merge them is to simply click the check boxes on the left hand side of the two transactions and then click the merge button up above. And now we only have one transaction for 4347 that's still linked to the bank but is also recognized as an invoice payment for our invoice to Doe Enterprises. And that would be how you would manage a manual invoice payment even if your bank accounts are synced. Thank you for watching the Bootstrapper's Guide to Wave Accounting. If you found this video useful, I encourage you to click the like button below, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and share this video with other entrepreneurs. Doing so will help us to continue creating more videos like this one for you and other Wave users here on the Accounting Lab.